Hello, hello, my friends. Let's catch up. I actually have quite a lot to share with you guys today. I have a little bit of a string haul. I bought some strings and then we need to catch up about bracelets. I've been making quite a lot. And then we can talk about books a bit at the end. I'm literally filming right what now. What color is this? Yellow. They're all yellow. It's yellow. Like a no, no, it's like a... yellowish. <laughs> it's still completely different. Than like me. it's peachy yellow, <laughs> but yeah. like it's yellow. You want to be in the vlog? Hey guys! <laughs> 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 So as I talked about in the previous vlog, I'm pre-filming currently. I have a whole schedule planned out until like the last week of August. The basic plan is to at least have one video ready per week. The better plan is to have one video ready per week, get that done as soon as possible, and then throughout the summer film more videos so that I have more than one video a week. I'm doing all this in advance because I actually have time now, and I probably will have less time going forward, and also just feels like a good idea, to be honest. It just feels like a good idea to film a bunch in bulk, have that ready, do more on top of that. And then I will also be able to pre-film for the autumn when the time comes. So because I've been doing that, I've been working like crazy, pretty much. I've been filming videos nonstop for a solid month. Stefan has been helping me edit them so much. I'm so grateful for that because it's been, he literally saves me hours per video. So it's been an amazing help. And with that, I'm using a lot of string. And this is the first time ever since I decided not to buy string in the UK that I've actually encountered the need to buy string in the UK. Let's back up. The reason I don't buy string in the UK is because it's very expensive. The strings that I bought today cost me £1.30 per string. That pains me to say. That brings me physical pain to say because I feel like that is a ripoff. One pound 30 per string. I have my opinions on that. I don't typically buy strings in the UK. I typically buy strings whenever I go visit family in Russia. I buy in bulk a bunch of strings when I'm there and then I just bring it over here. It ends up costing me roughly 45 pence per string. That's nearly three times cheaper. So that's why I only really buy string over there. I also buy a different brand, which is why it's cheaper, but I don't see much of a difference between that brand and DMC, which is what I bought in the UK because that's what is typically sold here. But I haven't been to Russia in a really long time and the next time I'm going is coming up in a few months. I need strings now. So this is the first time in this entire time since I've made the decision to not that I've needed to buy strings in the UK. So I went to Hobbycraft, which is a hobby store here, and I got a bunch of string. I came looking for strings for very specific patterns. I want to make a collection of sort of fruit alphas. These are the patterns that I'm looking at making. So I came in looking for very specific strings for very specific bracelets. It was actually a struggle. I didn't realize how much of a challenge that was going to be, but I spent probably an hour just looking for strings for those individual bracelets. And I'm not even confident that I made a good choice, to be honest. Choosing colors is difficult in general. And I thought I would find it easier when I had like a bunch of strings in front of me that I could choose pretty much any color of because I could just buy whichever ones that I needed. But no, it, it was a challenge. And I, I spent a very long time picking them out, but I did. I picked them out, I brought them here, and uh, I'm very happy that I did. So so I'm gonna show you those strings in just a second. But yeah, I've been encountering this more and more. I've been making a bunch of braces currently. There's a lot of patterns that like I wanted to make, and then I realized, oh, wait a minute, I don't have any pastels. Oh, wait a minute, I don't have any pinks that fit this criteria. I don't have any purples that have a tinge of pink in them or something. Like most of my purples are like bluish, they're not pink enough. So I've been encountering problems like that for a while. So I'm glad I finally got the strings that I needed. I also made a list of a bunch of other colors and a bunch of other strings that I want to get next time I am in Russia. So I'm able to bulk buy cheaper strings. So <laughs> I'm going to be doing another massive haul probably when I eventually get there. I'm going in April, but let's have a look at the strings I got today. I don't even want to utter how much money I spent today. I feel like I spent an absolutely ridiculous amount. Keep in mind that each string is one pound 30. I will not be telling you how much I spent because it's stupid, but you can visually get an idea. The one perk you have of being a content creator like I am, is that you can business expense this stuff because it is a literal business expense for me. Yay, I got strings, a bunch, a bunch of strings. I'm really happy that I have these strings. Don't get me wrong. I'm really, really happy that I now have them. 
I feel like I spent a ridiculous amount of money on them, but I'm happy that I have them. I decided not to go with particularly vibrant colors. A lot of these are kind of muted. I don't know if that's the right word, but do you get what I'm saying? Like when you look at this skein of green, right? Like it's not bright in your face green. It's mild. It's just, it's just kind of there. I don't know how to describe it. I, don't, I lack the terminology when it comes to like color theory and stuff, but I feel like you get what I'm saying. Like this is one of the reds that I picked out. Like it's red, but it's not in your face red. So I, I like these. I tried to go with a similar sort of tone for all of these because all of these were picked out for specific bracelets. These are not just like random colors that I thought I needed. No, these are all apart from white. I got a bunch of white because I'm running out of white, but everything else was picked out for specific individual bracelets. And this is going to be a collection. So I want a general similar vibe across all of them. So I got <laughs> all of these and I like looking at them. They're really pretty. I need to separate them and uh, try to remember which ones I actually bought for which individual patterns. Thankfully, when I was in the store, I actually took pictures as I was picking them out. I was like, okay, this one, this one for this pattern, this one for that pattern and so on so I didn't forget so I need to se separate them but I'm gonna do that in a little bit. I'm also making a bunch of bracelets at the moment for tutorials. I've actually been on a little bit of a tutorial kick at the minute. As I said I'm trying to plan everything out so I have a video a week at least until the end of August so that's what I'm doing now <laughs> but I've already filmed two extra tutorials. I'm trying to alternate between like not with me videos, tutorial videos and quote-unquote fun videos which are something that like doesn't fit into either category. Fun videos would be like a wrap up video or a challenge video or a, I don't know, rating your to do's memes video, something like that. And so with that in mind, if I'm trying to post in like a pattern like that, there's only so many tutorials that fit in a certain number of weeks. And I've already filmed <laughs> plenty of tutorials, but thankfully I am on a tutorial kick. I filmed two extra tutorials that don't actually fit into that layout that I had picked out. So I'm already gonna have some weeks that have extra videos on them, which is exciting. I think not with me's are the most difficult to film for because I can't really pre-film as much of them as I want to unless I guess I film literally every bracelet I make which isn't some of the bracelets that I make don't really fit for a not with me I don't know how else to describe it but yeah not with me's I think take the longest just because each individual bracelet takes like five hours to make so yeah, anyway, I'm pre-filming. I would say a third is done. A third is like fully done. Another third I am working on actively. And then there's another third that is waiting to be worked on. So we're making decent progress. Lots of videos to come. Let's chat books and then I'll show you the braces that I'm working on. So last we spoke, I had just finished Jade City, which is book one in the Greenbone saga. Since then, I finished the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy series. N I didn't like it. <laughs> I didn't like it. I don't. Book four was weird and I didn't understand why we had it but it ended nicely you know it had a, a good ending to it and then book five happened and a bunch of stuff that happened in book four just was gone <laughs> didn't have any kind of resolution to it didn't make any sense why we had it if it's not going to be continued so that just disappeared and then book five I don't actually hate the ending a lot of people don't like how this series ended I don't hate the ending. I just found it weird and, and just the entire book, I was just like, what? Why are we doing this again? I did not love these last two books. I would say the first book was genuinely top tier. I loved the first book. The second book was enjoyable. The third book was just all right. The fourth was why and the fifth was what? So those are my feelings on the Hitchhiker's series. If you're thinking of starting it, I definitely, definitely recommend the first one. And if you don't want to, you can just, you know, finish there. <laughs> you can just read the first one, that's fine. But hey, you might enjoy the whole series. But point is, even though I didn't like how it ended, I still very much think the first one is worth it because it was just phenomenal. After that, I also read Artemis by Andy Weir. I read Project Hail Mary by him last year and that book was in my like top five books, probably that I've ever read really, but in 2022 specifically. I really, really loved Project Hail Mary, so I was really Really keen to pick up another one by him. I read Artemis, I loved it. It's not the same vibes at all. Like Project Hail Mary is very much a big scale, sort of big consequences kind of story. This story is not big consequences. This story is consequences specific to the character. So Artemis follows a woman who has lived her whole life since she was six on the moon. The moon is populated, there is a city there, and there's a bunch of stuff going on. There's like a whole society of people and there's very interesting sort of, I guess, politics within it. But we follow this main character who is a criminal and she smuggles stuff. And uh, we follow her as she goes on and 
heist. So it's very much an adventure novel with consequences specific to this character. We follow along and the character makes stupid decisions and we follow her as she suffers the consequences of her stupid decisions and then makes more stupid decisions. It was a lot of fun. It's quite short, like it's barely 300 pages and it was genuinely a lot of fun. I enjoyed this one significantly. And those were all the books that I actually read. I am reading two big boys currently, two very big boys. I'm in the process of reading Jade War, which I am currently really enjoying. I'd say I'm about 30% in, something like that. I'm already heavily tabbing it because my God, I, I can see how this would be a favorite series of mine by the time that I finish it. I am very much enjoying this series. It has everything that I love in fantasy, but it's also set in a modern-ish world, which isn't something that I typically read. I don't typically read urban fantasy, so this is really interesting and new to me. It's also set in a culture that I'm not particularly familiar with and that I haven't personally experienced, so I'm finding it fascinating on both of those aspects. But also it's just so beautiful beautifully written and it's so politically heavy, it's such a politically intriguing story and all of our characters are morally grey, which is my favourite kind of characters. And some of my favourite characters in this book, oh my god, they make horrific decisions that make my jaw just drop. There was one specific thing that happened that I still can't get over. So this phenomenal top tier storytelling. And I'm also currently listening to A Clash of Kings, which is book two in the Game of Thrones series. This one is huge. It's like a thousand pages, I think, in paperback. Very big. It's a brick. I am just over halfway in it. I am listening to this on audiobook, but I got the paperbacks in the full series. I actually got the box set, which also came with like a map of Westeros and everything. So that was really exciting. But I am tracking my progress within the book itself, just because sometimes I like to read along to like specific bits. And I also like to have the visual of where I am in the book. So I'm listening to this one and I'm hopefully gonna finish with it at some point. <laughs> because it's been a while. I think I've been listening to this one for like a month now, so it's big. Let me show you the bracelets that I've been working on. These are the three bracelets that I'm currently working on, and all three of these are for tutorials. This is what this one looks like. It's a little confetti bracelet. I quite like the colors here. I also picked out like a dark purple for the outline instead of a black, and I think it looks quite well. This one is a nice sort of rainbow one, and this one kind of reminds me of a beach. I really like this one. I think the colors are really summery as well. So I filmed all three of these four tutorials. I'm gonna try and finish them now really quickly so I can film the intros and outros to them before my nails grow out too long. <laughs> I structure my entire filming schedule around when I get my nails done. Here are the three bracelets. I did end up finishing all three of these and I really like how all of them turned out. I think the twisted ties on these are also really cute because I just love separating twisted ties by color. I don't even know which one of these would be my favorite. I actually really like all three of them. Though I must say this one does stand out. I've made this pattern a million times before. But there's something about the specific colors that I chose for this one. Also with the outline not being black or white, the outline here is sort of a deep purple slash maroon. I just love this one a lot, especially when compared to previous versions of the pattern that I made. So all three of these were made for tutorials and you will see these tutorials as they come out within the next few months. But I also have the patterns linked in the description for you if you just want to use that. What I want to do now is I want to cut strings for a next batch of bracelets that I'm going to be doing. I want to make a collection of alpha bracelets. And these are the strings that I showed you in the haul at the beginning of the video. So that's what I'm going to be doing now, except I won't show you in this video because I'm actually filming it for TikTok. So I'll chat with you then. But what I do want to show you is two really cool books that I just got in the mail. I got two very exciting and massive books in the mail today. If you are in the book community on any online space, you've probably seen this book already. This is A Day of Fallen Night by Samantha Shannon. It is a prequel to Priory of the Orange Tree, which I read about a year ago and loved. It is a standalone, despite being a prequel, and I am very excited to read it. I pre-ordered it so that I got it as soon as it got released. It's such a beautiful cover as well. And when you open it, it has this beautiful dragon and you will notice that it's signed. I'm so excited. Got one that was signed by the author and I'm very happy. I'm excited to read this one. I think I'm gonna be reading it once I finish the Greenbone Saga. It's really big. It's 
800 and something pages. So it's gonna take me a while. But I definitely plan on reading this one this year. And I also have this book, which I also pre-ordered. It was just released. I can't find a pronunciation guide online for the name, but I'm gonna try my best. This book is called The Adventures of Amina Al-Sirafi. And this is a book by Shannon Chakraborty, who is the author of the David Bard trilogy, which I also read last year. And I loved that trilogy. That trilogy took root somewhere deep inside my heart. And so when I saw that this author is coming out with another book that isn't part of a trilogy, just another book, I had to get it. I absolutely love this cover. I think it is so gorgeous on all sides. It's just absolutely wonderful. And then when you open it, it opens onto this beautiful map. This is one of the coolest things I've ever seen in a book. It is gorgeous. And of course, because I pre-ordered it, I also got this one signed. So I am very excited just in general about these books. I was gonna get them anyway, but now I got them on pre-order and I have them signed. It's adding to my collection of signed books. These are gonna be the fourth and fifth signed books that I have. I have one book by John Green that was signed, which is Turtles All The Way Down. And then I have both of Hank Green's books, which were also signed. So these are my fourth and fifth signed books. And I'm very excited to read these. Both of these I'm planning on reading at some point this year, hopefully soon, but I'm also not gonna be in London for like two and a half months starting in April. So maybe once I get back, cause I'm not taking these with me, they are heavy. And then I also have a book update for you guys about my book. I just got my book report yesterday and I found out that in the first four months since this book was published, you guys got it nearly 2000 times. And that completely blew me away because it was not what I expected at all. <laughs> so thank you so much to everyone who has got this book. I really, really hope you enjoy it. I hope it lives up to your expectations. I hope you learn something from it. And I hope you're sharing the bracelet love with your friends around you. I am thrilled and beyond grateful that so many people wanted to read and, and look at something that I created. And I'm thankful to each and every one of you. If you haven't gotten the book yet and you are thinking of getting it, even if you aren't a beginner, it makes for a really cool gift. This book is available worldwide. Anyway, you typically buy books. It's also available on ebook, which I don't mention very often, but you can download it as an ebook as well. I'll leave a direct purchase link in the description in case you want to. But I am so absolutely thrilled. I'm so happy with this. Like looking back on it, this was such a cool thing to have done. Like it was so much work and I was extremely overwhelmed when I was doing it. Like it was, it was a lot between having a full-time job and still trying to run this channel. I, for like three or four solid months of 2022 at the beginning, I did nothing but sleep and work either on my job or on this or a little bit on my YouTube channel. I kind of neglected my YouTube channel while I was writing this, but I still try to post like once a month at least. So I just straight up just worked and slept and did nothing else for like three to four months. And I am just, yeah, I'm blown away. I can't believe that this is a real thing and I can actually like say that I'm an author now. Like I've written a book. This is something that is just gonna be with me forever now. Like I've, I did this, that's just really cool <laughs> to me. And of course, if I haven't shown you before, I'll show you now. This is my uh, favorite page of the book. This is the acknowledgement section where I like thank people who helped me along the process. And I of course had to thank my wonderful and beautiful children who sat on me and um, tried to sit on my keyboard multiple times and just generally assisted as emotional support when I was writing this book. I'm so glad I got to include that in there. <laughs> That's just a fun tidbit. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm gonna leave you guys here. I wasn't actually planning on posting a vlog today. It's kind of like behind the scenes tidbit. I was not planning on posting a vlog today. I needed to have a different video in this slot, but I accidentally messed up the video scheduling and I ended up with a hole. And I'm trying to post in like a pattern. I'm trying to post a not with me video and a tutorial video and then like a quote unquote fun video, which is like a challenge or a, or a wrap up or something that doesn't really fit into a not with me or a tutorial category. So I'm trying to post in this pattern and then I accidentally messed up my scheduling by one week and I had this haul for today. And I was like, oh my God, I can't move everything else up. I mean, I could have, but first of all, that would be a significant amount of work because it's not just like I need to shift all the videos that I scheduled. I also need to shift all the socials that I planned around that, which is like Instagram posts, Instagram reels, TikToks, uh, short videos on YouTube. Like there's a bunch of different socials that I had already scheduled for the next like six weeks. The next six weeks of videos are completely scheduled. So there's a lot more coming, just FYI. And obviously as I'm pre-filming, I'm working on beyond that now, but 
I could have, in theory, moved everything by one, but that still would have messed up my like pattern that I'm trying to get go for. So I ended up just being like, okay, I'm just gonna film a vlog. So <laughs> this was kind of uh, spontaneous and unexpected, but here we are. It's a nice little check-in of a uh, sort of real time because going forward, it's gonna be a lot of stuff that I pre-filmed. I don't know why I'm holding so dearly to this like posting pattern, to be honest, because the plan is to get at least a video a week um, for the summer. Well, and the spring, obviously now we're in spring. So like the next six months, basically, I'm trying to get one video a week for the next six months in this pattern. But then once that is done, obviously I still have those six months of time to work on more videos. So hopefully I'm actually gonna be posting more than one video a week at some point. So the pattern is still gonna get messed up, but here we are. I like patterns. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's just like some behind the scenes um, stuff for you guys since, since you're here and since you're in a vlog. Anyway, I'm gonna leave you guys here. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for getting the book if you have. As I said, I I still can't get over the fact that we sold nearly 2,000 copies. That's crazy to me. That was so unexpected. I was expecting maybe, maybe like 200. So it blew me away, honestly. I also wanna give a special shout out to my patrons who support the work that I do on this channel and whose support I truly appreciate as well. Thank you so, so much for being patrons. And if you also wanna become one, the link to that is in the description as always. But in any case, I appreciate you being here. So thank you for that. And I will see you in my next video. And the next one after that. And the next one after that. Cause I've already pre-scheduled fully ready, like six weeks of videos. <laughs> so I will see you soon. <laughs> Bye.